Hi, and welcome to another video. My name is Rena Wells. I am highly intuitive. I'm like next level psychic medium. I have all of the clairs, and um, I work with plant medicine, predominantly ayahuasca. And today I wanted to talk about my life story. I'm putting this out there because uh, I want to find more people like me. <laughs> I'm just gonna be honest. Um, i am been born of a different uh, vibration completely in the sense that uh, I've done a lot of healing that most people aren't able to complete in a lifetime. And I want to put this video forward because I know there are a lot more that are highly sensitive, who have amazing gifts, and yet the way in which our system has been created does not support those gifts. I also want to bring this forward because I've always been one to speak up of my truth. I've always been one to cause a ruckus and to say things that irritate the hell out of people. And so I'm saying that this video is, is to be heard with a very open mind. I am turning... Um, I won't turn the comments off right away, but if I do see any negative comments, I will ban you from my site or I will turn off the comments altogether. I'm putting this out there because I truly believe that the way that this world is and how we have all been conditioned in this society is not the truth alignment of God. And I don't believe any religion is truly aligned to God. And I don't believe any New Age spirituality motive is aligned to God. What I do know is that God resides within all of us. And in order to know that truth, it takes a purifying process and a dark walk through darkness in order to know the truth. And so I'm breaking this forward because there is no family, if you are living in the system, if you have been raised in society in what we know and you're not living you know, in full alignment with nature in the midst of the Amazon, have never seen a vehicle before, then you have been conditioned to a certain degree of what the society and what the mass consciousness has brought forward. And so this video, I'm putting a warning that this is not anything against my family and friends or anybody else, if, if there you get triggered by this video, please know that these triggers are happening within yourself. This video is not also meant to be seen for attention or anything like that. I have been judged my entire life, you guys, even for my own family members, okay? Siblings, my parents, my, co my cousins, my aunts, my uncles, my grandparents, my friends, people in my neighborhood, I never fit in. I have been a freak my entire life. And so I'm just claiming that label and I'm putting it out there because I know there are a lot of people that need to hear this and I'm not afraid anymore. I used to be very much afraid. So I'm going to talk to you in regards to why I have such a clear channel. And the first thing Spirit is bringing me back to is to first, you know, talk about our society and that no family is perfect. You know, I used to date this one person who would be like, oh, my family is like, leave it to Beaver. We never had any trauma. And <laughs> like, that's a great cover up there because um, I'm going to be talking about exes and relationships as well. And I just want to put it out there that everybody has been conditioned on this planet. No family is perfect on this planet. There is trauma in all lineages and there is shame and guilt and there is a stifling of our voice when it comes to this within the family structure. And this is very important to come out. So I want to make that clear. So I am not passing judgment on the relationships that I have had. I am simply bringing forth the repression that needs to come out and again those that hear this may get triggered but that's not really my problem the the problem is the trigger within you that that feeling resides within you and that you need to take a look at why it's triggering you because the truth will never cause a trigger uh in the sense of uh if you really sit with the truth and you get past your own internal flare-ups 
right? Once you get past the flare ups and you can sit with a piece of truth or a different perspective, you will notice there's no reason to be defensive. Defensive behavior is the first sign that your ego is flaring up. All right. So let's get started. Okay. Spirit wants me to take you back to like what we're talking about, that there is no one family that hasn't uh, had some type of trauma and abuse that's in it. Now, mine was very much so uh, in the Guyanese culture. I'm going to say why I've never resonated with my culture is because of the uh, the negative narcissistic tendencies of personality disorders within the Caribbean culture. And this doesn't just happen within the Caribbean culture. This has happened within, you know, all minority groups that have been affected by colonialism and before that. So again, these are just behaviors that naturally come up based from trauma. Trauma has a certain type of coping mechanisms, which I have noticed on a macro scale as well as a micro scale. And psychologically, and I'm going to get into the psyche a bit as well too, because I've done a lot of study, okay, in psychology on my own, um, pretty much to understand myself and family dynamics. And I've also been within, you know, getting all kinds of psychological therapies from the time that I was 16. So I have a great grasp on triangulation and on all kinds of different psych, psych terms, okay? So I want you to realize that I am here to bridge mysticism with the psychological aspect, okay? Because I have such a, a pure vision that I'm able to Thank you, Spirit is saying, able to transcend and bridge in mathematics, uh, quantum physics, uh, philosophy, uh, new age tactics, and the mental health realm, okay? Uh, the medical realm. I'm really good with plants and different medications and, and all of these things. I have a wide range of uh, understanding, and Spirit's really bringing through that I have an intelligence that has been stifled my entire life because people do not want to hear what I have to say, um, being pegged as narcissistic and righteous and all of those things, which is thank you for all of that, because it shows me your insecurities for those that are listening to this that have attacked me. So I'm not putting this forward in a sense of like, oh, I'm right either. It is a sense that there are so many highly sensitive beings out there that do not have a voice in this world. And I want to create that platform for you guys that have been completely stifled. Okay. The way in which that our world operates, Spirit's bringing me the, back to this, is that we are conditioned to put our sides, ourselves aside so that we can care and nurture other people and forget about our inner truth. You know, and you can see that in the TV shows that we watch. You can look at that even in the psychology you know, and how we treat other people, just be kind, just be generous, just be this. But we don't do those things for ourselves. That's called selfishness. And so true narcissistic behavior that I want to bring up is not about choosing yourself. Narcissistic behavior is the siphoning and the piggybacking off of those others who do give freely, who are kind, okay, who do wear their hearts on their sleeve. And the narcissists are the ones that placate and fake the emotions to hook you in. It is a psychological mind messing around tool. And this conditioning is the disease, is the Watiko, is what has happened in society, okay? It is the disease of narcissism that it is that we are to take what we can in a relationship instead of what we can give. And this conditioning can happen from the lowest of frequencies to the highest of frequencies. There are many spiritual people that I have worked with, even in the medicine community, who are completely narcissistic, okay? I have had medicine people who I've sat with, who I've shared my heart with, who I have opened with, okay, who claim to hold space for me. And I can tell you there are some of the most narcissistic that I have seen on the planet. Because of my abilities, they were unable to siphon certain things. They then created, uh, stop talking to me, created, uh, you know, stories about me and all of these other things. So I want this to come out to people that 
have experienced this. You know, you open your heart to somebody, you share, but then they manipulate you in some way. You know, I've had friends that I've been nothing but giving and open and honest, and they get jealous of my gifts, right? There are so many gifted people out there that have this experience who do have a pure heart. And this is where I'm bringing this forward because I do not want you to be siphoned anymore. All right. So my parents are from the Caribbean. They came to Canada in the late 60s. Okay. Most of my family was born in Canada or England or the U.S. And following my family lineage, uh, there are a bunch of psychics in my family. Uh, they're on both sides of my family, highly psychic. And because of the Caribbean culture I've never resonated with is because of the narcissistic tendencies to use humor as a form of passive aggression. You know, uh, we are not allowed to feel in my culture. Uh, people are made fun of if they cry. People are called names if their body doesn't suit them a certain way. Um, if you're not fair skin or if you're not skinny or, you know, everything is based on, you know, uh, an exterior appearance. Okay. There's no emotional support I haven't found in my own culture. Okay. I'm not saying that it doesn't happen, but there is an umbrella of narcissism that runs. Okay. I even see it in the East Indian culture, East Asia culture, you know, and we see it everywhere around the world because that's how society is that you have to have a certain exterior type of look, right? Even if you look at Instagram and people that are influencers, you have to be a certain <laughs> uh, way, you know? Um, and this has been a struggle for me because I have always been one to go against the grain. Um, even in high school, you know, I dressed the way that I wanted to dress. I created my own fashion trends, you know, and I, at the age of, you know, grade six or seven, I wrote an article of racism to the, you know, the local city paper about a racist woman and then got shunned for it in my class. You know, my peers never supported me. I've had people, I've even noticed like people from high school watching me on Instagram. It's like, hi, like, what do you want now? <laughs> Cause now your life is horrible. Now you like are seeking something outside of me. And so this is seeking something that I can give. Right. And it's fine. I would welcome anybody back into my life. However, let me just put this out there. You guys that, um, I will, I will call people out on their stuff. I have no qualms about that. And it's not that, and thank you, Spirit is bringing up, you know, we have this picture of what an enlightened being is. You know, my lineage goes way back to Hinduism. Um, before my mom's side is Islam, Muslim, but even before that, it got, it went way back to Hinduism because our family comes from India, Northern India. And, you know, I can't even look at the gurus or even follow any of those teachings because women are not represented. And what I know, especially from my lineage, the women in my lineage are super psychic and super gifted. But because we are so sensitive, we struggle with mental health issues. And I see it throughout my entire family. Okay. Now there's no shame in that, but my family would see that as shame. Okay. Same with my father's side. They are super intelligent. It's a by the book intelligence. Okay. Mathematics, science, highly business people, very intelligent on my father's side, but a suppression of emotion. Okay. Especially with the men on my, on my father's side. Okay. Um, that they continuously uh, feed into our righteousness, you know. So this is the dynamic in my lineage that I have been healing, okay, of letting go of that uh, judgmental narcissism from my father's side and yet diving into the suppressed shame and repression of emotions of psychic abilities on my mother's side, okay. And... I'm putting this out there because all of us need to look at this. If we want to evolve as conscious, aware human beings, we must be able to accept the lineage and the distortions that were given to us to heal. And if we are unable to heal that, 
than with our family, right? And it's not necessarily that you, um, you know, can have a strong relationship. I have had to, you know, put very severe boundaries in my family relationships because they consistently siphon from me. They're not authentic in their expression. Instead, they fake their expressions. <laughs> um, I've had family members that fake their expression and try to placate me, buy me gifts, or do, you know, the monetary things to, you know, show gratitude because that's how society shows us how it is to be. We have to look at how we are conditioned. That when we show that we care about someone, we give them something. We gift them something, right? Or we sit there and know like if I if I give them my ear and have and let and listen and if I shed some tears with them, yes, that will make things better. But that's not true either, <laughs> right? We are conditioned in our society to believe that's what caring, that's what nurturing is. But narcissistic energy will do all of those actions and trick highly sensitive people into that, thinking that that individual does care when it is the furthest thing from the truth. We must understand that if you are feeling the vibration of narcissism, if you are feeling, and that could be on a, on a various amount of scales, if you, of frequency, right? Because it could be uh, someone that's not fully narcissist, but uses those tendencies, you know, to placate and act, you know, um, I've had somebody that came to me and, and has said, you know, Rena, I'm so sorry I treated you like that in childhood. I never realized how sensitive you are. You're so sensitive and I'm so sorry. And this person would apologize and everything would seem to be okay, but then they would take me for granted again months down the line. You know, these are the patterns that, um, we have to be fully aware of, especially when you're highly sensitive and when you're really working through your stuff, right? You have to look at who's actually real at investing into what you have to say. You know, I purposely do not engage with people who do not understand me to the depth of who I am. I, I really don't. I need to keep it, um, I can engage, but only to a certain extent. And spirit is bringing a lot of this up because we have a predisposed connotation in the new age community of what an enlightened being looks like. I'm here to say that a lot of people on this planet are already enlightened. We're moving into the mysticism realm. This is not a journey to hit the point of enlightenment. And what we think enlightenment looks like is the trick in the new age community that we have to be looking like Jesus or Buddha or whatever else, okay? Those beings were beyond enlightenment. They, they already hit the mysticism realm, okay? Enlightenment is the ability to psychologically be at ease. It's the ability to not have your psyche and those emotions so intertwined that you have a complete sealed energy system within you where you are psychologically and emotionally healed. That's enlightenment. Okay. Um, and then you move into the mysticism realm to work on your gifts. And now everybody has these highly psychic gifts. Okay. A lot of people, thank you spirit is saying to bring up a lot of people have an awakening when they come. I'm going to be fully forward with you guys that I did not have an awakening. I have seen and known spirit this entire incarnation, okay? And growing up that way was very difficult because I assumed everybody saw what I saw, all right? My mom had sent me to, my parents had sent me to Sunday school when I was very little and in church, you know, I'm looking at Jesus, you know, on stage and with the, with the pasture and whatever. And I'm like, wow, everybody comes here to see Jesus, which I didn't realize. No, not everybody's actually seeing Jesus. <laughs> Um, and so I, at a very young age, realized, okay, not everybody is seeing this, you know? Um, and I, and just because, and think you, Spirit wants to bring this up. And even though there are amazing psychics and intuitives and healers that are here on the planet, Spirit is saying, just because you are born with gifts does not mean that your channel is clear. Okay. There has to be a refinement of your gifts which is the purifying process to be able to walk through dark, your darkness, to purify your gifts and to refine them 
so that you can know the smallest shifts in energy frequency. And this is where a lot of people have issues with me because um, if you do come and you work with me, I will bring up stuff that you may not be subconsciously aware of. And I have had clients where I've had to, you know, spirit gives me a step-by-step process. Okay, talk to them about this. Now talk to them about this. And I usually bring them in a huge cyclic loop where in their mind, where they're able to finally see it. And this is how I know this is not something psychologically that I have learned. These are channel teachings right from source where source comes in and says, Rena, it's an issue with their father. Okay. Rena, now it's an issue with men on this side or this. And, you know, and they would take me step by step through a coaching session until that person sees it. So you see, this is not something um, where I get my information from is not from books. It's not from any type of teaching. Um, I've been a hermit most of my life and very seclusive of who I share my energy with because most people do not understand me. And I'm putting this out there because I have been made fun of, I have been treated poorly, and I'm just really damn sick of it. <laughs> I'm just so tired. I People ghost me, like my twin ghosts me because he gets involved with some like karmic bullshit. Like I am over it. I, I can't tell you guys how I'm over it. And I wanted to bring this up in regards to twins and things like that. I'm going to drink my coffee. So I'm having my coffee as I'm doing this. Like I'm so over with the gossip. I'm so over with the repression. And I can tell you that I'm so psychic and I can tell when there's repression around me. I know people who have been my friends, people who have disconnected from me. I can tell if y'all listen to this, I can hear all y'all. I know all of what you're saying. So keep doing it. Um, this is a very fiery channel because and, and message because I want you guys to know me. Okay? And... God has a righteous, a righteousness, the truth of our source creator, right? And I'm not talking about angels and spirit guides. We all come from that. I'm talking about the true one God that created everything, that created all the religions because there's no right religion, right? That created uh, every single thing so that there are different avenues for people to gain their enlightenment. Everyone goes through their enlightenment stage through a different path. And, you know, I have picked up many different um, insights. I have looked for the sameness my entire life through every methodology, through every book, through every book that I've read, through every religious teaching. I've studied Buddhism, Islam, Christianity. Um, I've read the Torah a little bit. So a lot of my teachings come from a, a mixed match of the divine truth. I have looked for the truth and that energy vibration in all teachings. And because of the trauma that I've went through, and I'm going to go into that because the trauma is something that needs to be talked about because nobody wants to talk about it. Like, let's get, forget about the shame and the guilt. There, there is so much trauma in family. Nobody wants to talk. There's, there is emotional trauma, mental trauma, sexual trauma, everything. The world is sick, you guys. Humanity is sick and it starts in the family. And it doesn't matter if your parents didn't abuse you. Their grandparents probably did abuse them somehow. That energy seeps in through other forms of passive aggressive psychological trauma. Okay. And it's these aspects that when you actually dive into that trauma, which again, I have been healing since I was 16. I knew with the trauma in my family that I had to heal. And so unlike most people in my family who call me crazy, you know, I can name quite a few, um, <laughs> go right ahead, <laughs> call me crazy. Um, I can say to them, I did my healing. Like, what have you done? You've done nothing. You just keep repressing your feelings. So good on you. Um, I went through years, years and years. I've done the medicated route. I've done the mindful practices. I've done the group therapy. I've done everything that you can think of. Okay. And not one therapist could ever find anything truly wrong with me. First, they thought it was anxiety. Then it was chronic depression. Then it was, you know, do she bipolar is, you know, and histronic, you know, all of these different labels, I can tell you can't diagnose me. Okay. 
because I have a grasp of reality. I have an understanding. I'm able to merge all of those things. And so because of that, okay, I'm here to help you highly sensitive beings. Okay. So spirit wants to get into the passive aggression, the highly sensitive, and most people on the planet go through. And this is why we are suppressed in our families, because we are being conditioned to act and be a certain way so that we can keep the shame of whatever traumas deep in the subconscious. And a lot of us cannot remember these things because the subconscious hides them. And spirit is bringing up that we all fell in consciousness on this planet. Okay. This is a dense environment. It's completely dense. We had to split in our consciousness in order to have a small piece of our consciousness to reside in a 3D perspective. And what we are doing here is merging past lives, all types of different karma. Um, we're going to talk about karma because karma is just simply law of attraction. So I don't believe it in the sense that you have karmic debt. What I believe is that things that we are unable to evolve out of in other lives, that energy continues to come back until you're able to heal it okay that's karma and that karma runs down through your family lineage as well okay and so when we came here and we fell in consciousness spirit is saying that you have been falling in darkness since before you were born and birthed into this world when you came into the into the womb of your mother your biological mother you were still in darkness Okay, and then you were birthed into this light of this realm. And in order to uh, fall in consciousness in this dense world, uh, it's traumatic. That's why we cry when we come out. It's it is a trauma. As soon as you're born, it is a trauma because of the sensory uh, aspects are so high because we are actually sensitive beings. And if you ever watch a newborn baby that first comes out, right, and you put that baby on, on their mother's stomach, that baby will scoot and find its way to its breast. There is already an intelligence that we have in our babies that most people do not want to acknowledge. They are the purest form of creation um, until we condition them more, right? And... That entire aspect is that we continue falling even after we are born because then the DNA activates and we fall deeper into our lineage. And if we are unable to look at the shame in our family, then you are unable to evolve. And I, and I hate to put it so bluntly, but that's really the truth of the matter. You know, Mother Teresa, who, who I love, and I followed this quote, I heard it when I was 16 and it has been my mantra my entire life, is, you know, you say that you want to heal the world, we'll start with your family. And if you haven't healed those lineages within your family first, and you haven't walked through that, that darkness, then you cannot refine your gifts. And I hate to put it so bluntly, but this is the basis of it. And this is the, the issues that I have with the new age community. And this is why I do not go to, <laughs> um, I'm very careful who I share my energy with. I do not collaborate with very many people. I do not uh, go to readers very often um, because I can tell when, and you will be able to tell this, when you dive into your family lineage stuff and you really start looking at that healing process, you will realize who's done that work and who hasn't. When you go deep into your darkness, you will be able to tell who hasn't gone into their darkness. And, you know, and I work with medicine people who don't want to suffer. They don't believe they need to suffer. They don't believe that they need to go into the pain of their lineage in order to gain enlightenment. And that is part of the psyche that needs to break. I don't I I don't believe in this realm that you cannot have the darkness without the light and you cannot get refined gifts or a knowing of your power until you are willing to go into that into that darkness so that you can find pieces of our light bodies that have been scattered through eons through the DNA that we chose to come into. Now, Spirit is saying most of us already come into this DNA before, 
Okay, I have memories of actually being in a mountain range. I don't know if it's in Peru, but I feel it's in South America with my actual family members. I feel that we have had a lineage already in this bloodline. Um, I haven't been able to prove it, but it's just a knowing and, a, and past life memories that I have. Um, yeah, that have come up. So spirit wants me to talk a little bit about my gifts now and what I've been able to see and experience since I was a baby. So since I was a baby, um, highly sensitive, uh, when my mom was pregnant with me, they got, she got into a massive car accident. Uh, she, she was weird things happened with me from the start. Okay. Um, when I was born, I would not stop crying. I could not, um, be around other people. Uh, my parents had trouble. I don't know for how long, I think for the first year or two of my life, they couldn't take me out in public because I would scream at whoever came near me. And I have these memories. I've been sensitive my whole life and I could tell when somebody would hide their inner truth and when they would lie. And so this gift has been with me my whole life to call truth, right? Um, and it's divine God truth. And, and I, don't know why I have this gift, but it, I have it. <laughs> and so um, people get very irritated with me when I call them on things that they say, because I can tell the subconscious pattern that's playing out and it aggravates them and they don't like it. And they then obviously become defensive against me. And so since I was a little baby, and you can ask my parents, if you guys know my parents, go ahead and ask them. I would scream. And my family, you guys know this. I would scream. My dad would take me to his office. I would scream at the per at the, his boss. I would scream at every single person looking at me. And I had this one particular memory. My parents had people over. I can't remember which aunt it was, but somebody came over and said, you know, my mom's like, how are you? And my aunt said, oh, I'm fine. But I knew as a baby, I had already felt the energy that she was just screaming at her husband in the car. So I knew she was upset on the inside. And that discrepancy with her lie, telling my mother that she was fine, everything was good. I knew she was lying. I cried because we do not realize that when we lie to ourselves, how much it actually pains us. You are already putting yourself into a place of suffering the moment you choose to not speak your truth. And I've had this ability to see this in people my entire life. Um, I knew when people were lying right away because I immediately felt the disconnect from God. Wherever there wasn't God, it upset me. And can you imagine that's pretty much everywhere on this planet. My parents would take me everywhere. They couldn't take me anywhere because I would just scream at everybody because I'm like, oh my God, there's misalignment. There's misalignment. There's misalignment. Ah, this is painful. Very painful. Also, I had issues with food. Um, my, after the first year of birth, your, your baby is supposed to triple in birth weight. Let me take a sip of coffee. I didn't even double my weight. Okay. Um, I had issues in this 3D world right from the start. Um, I did not even double my weight. They started putting me in all kinds of like cow's milk, infilac, all these kinds of things. And I was very severely underweight until, um, and I was being um, abused at the time. The earliest abuse I remember was at the age of two. And um, from all kinds of different family members, I'm going to be honest and open about that because I know people like, <laughs> you can come talk to me about it if <laughs> people don't like being outed, right? But um, again, I've come to a place of forgiveness. It doesn't bother me anymore. This is where I am in my in my growth. It's like, yeah, I'm actually very grateful to all my abusers and to the abuse because if I didn't have that, I wouldn't be so refined in my gifts right now. And so our traumas are our gifts. Okay, guys, I know that's a hard one to hear, but they really are. Without my trauma, I wouldn't have been able to leave my body. God wouldn't have been able to hold me in spirit and um, save me of a lot of uh, dark memories and things like that. But if I did not have those things, then I wouldn't have the perception that I do. And uh, yeah, and this is from both sides of the family. And so, uh, and uncles and cousins and all of that stuff. So 
with all of that and being able to dissociate from my body and be with spirit, I had a very big misalignment in order to, you know, put on any weight or, you know, very underweight and, um, because I was living more in spirit than I ever was in this 3d world. Now, when I hit almost close to coming up to 10, I, I ballooned and got a great amount of weight on me because the trauma took so much in my body that, um, and all the medication and all this other stuff and, um, being put on, and then I was put on diets as a child, just very unhealthy behavior. Um, you know, in my family lineage, uh, my mother's side, all of my aunts are so beautiful. And so there's a stature of beauty in our family as well. Um, that was very much very struggling for me to maintain um, a type of, you know, look. And so you are teased in Guyanese culture, you know, if you don't look a certain way, you know. And so, you know, eating disorders, uh, suicide ideation came in very young. You know, I would wake up, you know, and go try and work out and try to lose weight because, you know, I had to look a certain way. And so I did that from the time I was seven, eight years old, you know, wanting to fit in was a thing that I always wanted. You know, I didn't fit. I was brown. I was the only brown girl on my street. You know, I didn't, you know, the kids at school were not nice. <laughs> um, yeah. And, uh, just very, again, narcissistic, but what happens? We learn the narcissism. And so this is how kids were are raised as well. And, you know, coming into my teenage years, you know, the depression really hit at like, 16 and whatnot, I knew that I had to go and get counseling for this and to work through the first part of my childhood. And so because of all of those traumas and all of that type of abuse, I've gone through everything, you guys, okay? I've gone through bulimia, anorexia nervosa, diet pills, uh, extreme exercise. I have done everything. I could probably like like, really, if I was to be an Instagram, I could be like a personal trainer, psych doctor, and like a mystic all in one. Um, I was thrown through the ringer very early on to the point that, you know, even my sexuality, um, am I gay? Am I straight? Am I, what is this? Um, and for me, um, that a lot of that healing didn't come through until I met my twin, um, because I had a belief system up in that point that I was just strictly a lesbian, but, uh, there was a misalignment there in my energies because of, um, masculine energy in my life, but we'll get into that. And so growing up, uh, as you can see, all of these aspects were the time of 16, I knew I had to check myself in, in for help, which I did now before then right? I was able to see spirit. I was seeing Jesus, a uh, white Buffalo woman came to me when I was, uh, I think about two or three years old. Uh, my father went and, um, brought back an indigenous, a uh, doll all in white leather. I was in love with her and, and she talked to me. And when I look back, she taught me a lot of things of how to hold on to my light um, during, um, abuse, whenever I was being abused or yelled at or whatever was happening, how to not let this little piece of my light go that this is God. And so I hung on to that light for a very, very, very long time. I remember, uh, you know, when I was a kid, I would close my eyes. I would see medicine. I would see the psychedelic kaleidoscope colors, when I would close my eyes, when I would fall asleep. And I didn't want that to go away. It did eventually go away. But since working with ayahuasca, that has come back to me now. I see that again. So I've hit another place of my innocence from when I was about two or three years old. So I've gone back quite a bit now. So this is the amount of healing that you will notice that as you start your healing, you will be going back in your timeline. You'll be going back into, you know, uh, from now to, you know, the last 10 years, 20, whatever, right back to as much as you can to your innocence. And when you can reclaim that innocence back into the present moment is when you will gain a lot of your refined gifts. But again, that is that walk through darkness in order to get to that point. So I've come to that place now where I'm able to see medicine and see all of these things very much when I was little. And I'm going to bring this up in regards to the twin flame journey. 
Um, I believe I met my twin at some point. There's a story behind that, but I haven't been able to validate it with my twin um, that I actually met him when we were kids, but that hasn't been validated yet. So I'm not going to bring that story up, but I do remember at about the age of eight or nine years old, even before then, I can't remember a time frame, might have been six or seven, but you know, I always felt very alone in my world. You know, I didn't get along with my sibling. I didn't get along with my parents because she was the one that was, you know, my sibling was whatever the, <laughs> the, the good one. I was the bad one, right? You know, in our culture, we, we always say one's good, one's bad, right? I was the black sheep. I was the bad one. I'm always the one that always talks my mouth, you know, which I'm talking right now. So <laughs> that doesn't change. That's just how I am. And, um, yeah, so I was very much left out and I was very much a loner, very much on my own, didn't have many friends. Um, and because of all of that, um, I decided to, you know, speak to God a lot. And the time that I was little, I've had, you know, I've seen fairies and leprechauns. I remember telling my cousin one time at the cottage, I was like, oh, like I would see the fairies. And he looked at me like I was insane. I'm like, okay, you don't see the fairies. So we're just not going to talk about that. Um, you know, I would wake up and I would see actual fairies and, um, leprechauns and all these kind of mystical creatures. So I've have had this veil lifted from my eyes very young. Um, the youngest that I saw fairies was about two or three. Three, I'm thinking and um yeah and then you know I was speaking to white buffalo woman I was a kid and Jesus when I was about six came into my life and when I was about yeah I guess it was about seven or eight or nine I can't remember the it could have been a little before but we were living in the house at that time and so I said to God you know like show me like who is like me who is like me and spirit would connect me with this little blonde boy <laughs> when I was really little. And I remember talking to him, you know, and I thought, okay, this is my imagination. I, I had that thought in my head at this age. I'm like, this is just my imagination, but I went with it because it felt so good, you know? And I would talk to him and we would talk, I would talk to him in my mind. He would talk back to me and I'm like, what's going on with you? And I remember that there was a lot of trauma that he had to close down a piece of him. And I think the last time I had that communication, and this was my twin. I didn't realize this was my twin at the time. Um, I just knew that he was a blonde boy. Um, when we connected uh, again, and he sent me a picture of when he was a child, I was like, oh my God, that's the boy from when I was little. <laughs> Where I thought it was just my dreams. You know, I was just fantasizing, but it wasn't. I was actually in communication with my twin telepathically when I was very little. And so being able to do that, he was my safe place when I was little through a lot of trauma and I would communicate and we would share, uh, but then he closed off and I was like, where I don't close this for me, don't close this for me. And then there was a point where I couldn't connect anymore. And you know, that faded from my memory quite a, a quite a long time, um, until I was in about the third grade uh, I was obsessed with this girl's name. She has the same name as my twin. It's uh, an androgynous name. And I was obsessed with this name. I wrote it down everywhere. I was obsessed. Now, I thought maybe her last name was something that <laughs> I was obsessed with, but no, it was the first name. And so that name really stuck with me my entire life as well. So I've known of my twin's name and I knew his features very young all through God and through what I've known. And, you know, now that I'm actually like doing this work and whatnot, like my family, I have healed my family. So I'm not going to, I'm not putting shame on anything. You know, this is just, everyone does what they know, what they can do at that point, based on how much trauma that they've en endured at that point. And so it's passed down through lineages. And so we need to forgive. And I've forgiven that. However, I, I do have healthy boundaries around certain family members because I won't partake. Probably not until they drink ayahuasca with me or that they can actually own up in a true, um, authentic way and show me their heart. Um, if not, I can't deal with that. And so spirit has really been, um, whew, 
It'll just gather myself and what they want me to say. Okay, so what Spirit really wanted me to bring forward here was in regards to these gifts that I have and being able to do this and being able to see the truth and the alignment. And this is where people like call me narcissistic. And and I, I love how people deflect because I've recently like lost friends and whatnot that are like, oh, but Rena, that's your truth. Like, this is what I hear. That's your truth. That's like, it's like, no, <laughs> there comes you know, a higher place in our evolutionary process that there are people that are messengers of God. Okay. We have had, you know, uh, I don't understand why, you know, we look at Christianity and their disciples that message Jesus's message and we call them saints and we're able to understand their, uh, uh, perspective or whatever else. And, you know, but nobody else in this day and age can do that. I don't understand that. Um, you know, Muhammad was chosen and by Archangel Gabriel and all of these things like, you know, that are we not at a time that we don't get these messages. And for those that are true messengers of God, they are put through a deep purification process. And I can honestly say, and I'm ready to stand up in that truth. So, um, I am one of those messengers and it's only because of the purification process that I've had to walk. You don't get, and this is another thing, you know, people claim I'm a clear channel, I can do this. And, you know, true healers and those that are messengers of God did never, never wanted this gift. Okay. <laughs> this is not something that I ever wanted. I have struggled with it my entire life. It has kept me separate from society. It has kept me from actually forming friendships all through high school and whatnot. People thought I was strange and weird. And, you know, this is, and I remember someone coming to me and saying like, oh, like, you know, like I have all these gifts and I can do this. And, you know, this girl says she has a channel and I'm like, yeah, someone wouldn't boast about that. This isn't like, this isn't something that I was ever proud of. You know, I'm only at 44 years old now stepping into saying, yeah, I am. And I do have that because, and you know why? And that's why I'm doing this video. This is why, you know, we are all born with gifts. But again, you do not get that refinement of knowing the fine discernment between dark and light until you have healed. And so I've had like uh, people and people in the medicine community too come up to me like, oh, Rene, your gift is for you. You shouldn't be sharing that. It's like, that's bull. I'm sorry. Like, um, if I paint, if I was an artist and I painted, you would say I could share that, but that's a channel, right? If I played music, I should share that, but that's a channel. Like everything we create is a channel. Everything that we write about, everything when we get into a creative sense, creativity is God. You know, when you create a painting, you are channeling something from the ethers. When you create a TV show, you are channeling ideas from the ethers. Nothing that we bring down here is new information. It's just a different form of expression. And so when people have told me like, oh, your, your psychic gifts are for you. It's like, no, <laughs> um, not at all. And I wouldn't say that to anybody else. It's like, you know, no, whatever you bring down, it's made for the collective. And, um, you know, you can tell a true healer for those that have a humbleness about their gifts. Um, those that want a power struggle, you know, they are the ones that are deflecting onto others that they're narcissistic. I don't call other people narcissistic. I call them, you know, they're unable to see their ways, but I see their pure soul and I forgive them. I would never turn anybody away if they weren't willing to come, if they were willing to come back and be humbled and open their soul and share, I would never turn that person away, but it has to be an authentic expression. You know what I'm saying? So, because I, again, have been burned, you know, and this is what God does for those that are really, um, highly sensitive that are new leaders of this new earth that are moving forward. It's, um, it's not a power thing. It's not a comparison. People that have these gifts, we don't compare ourselves to other people and say, well, I have that. And that person doesn't have that. Or I have that. And I don't have that. It's like, I know what I have. And I guess I need to find the courage to just come out and do it. 
um, and realize that sometimes the way that we operate and the way that we cope through traumas was refining our psychic gifts and how we are able to work through that. You know, people want to put me through a process. I'm going to bring this up. You know, I was doing a, a shaman course and I left it because I could immediately tell that the feminine energy who was leading that group had issues with me. I could, I could read that energy to a T. The moment that I bring in my power and it grounds um, in the conference call, thunder happened, you know, and I mentioned this to another, you know, uh, person who's in the medicine community who's like, oh, well, maybe you didn't do the thunder arena. And it's like, no, like you're just trying to <laughs> deflect of what I can actually do. You know, I've had um, friends that have witnessed, you know, a car didn't start and I put my hands on the car, I meditate and I got the car to start. Like I, ha these are magical things that I'm starting to tap into the more that I'm coming into my gifts. And, um, again, I'm not trying to like boast or anything like that. You guys, this path has not been easy. Like I, I have been terrified to even share this with anybody out there because people are like, oh, whatever. It's such a judgmental thing, but I know that I have to do it. And, um, you know, I've had, I was in the shaman course and immediately I knew that after I brought down this energy, this woman was afraid, I could tell her fear. And then the next session, she's already talking about that she didn't believe in the mystical stuff and blah, blah, blah. And I knew that this was wanting to get rid of me on a subconscious place. I felt it. But spirit also told me, Rena, you're spending $2,500 on this and this, and you're spending this money on this. Do you not know that you already have it? And so I have been, every time I go to a teacher that I think I can learn from, I realize I've already learned it. My life experience, going through these traumas, healing so deeply, I've realized every time I go like, oh, I need training from this person. I realize I already know that I've already done that work. Like, what am I doing? I, I have to step into a leader role which has been very difficult because I have not felt good enough. You guys, true leaders do not feel good enough to step into a leader role. Those that have ego want the spectacular ego driven aspect that comes from being a leader. I would be weary of that. Okay. Like I'm a boss lady. I know how to make the cash. Let me double your income. And like, no, that is not a thing. I, I hate to say it. It's just not a thing. And so, um, it's a humbleness with this calling, you know, everything I bring through for your guys is not me and my personality. It is like God uses my passion as an expression, you know, God brings it in and just brings it like the fire, like what God has, like a volcano erupting. I emanate the passion of God. I have that. Spirit uses that in my personality to express that. Spirit uses, you know, because the consciousness that's inside of me is God consciousness. The consciousness that's inside of you is God consciousness, right? What's happening in our world is the majority of the ego is suppressing that light that is inside of you. Now, because of my trauma, God told me very early on and, and white Buffalo woman was to hang on to that light, you know? And that's the reason where I have held on to that light walking through all of these deep traumas, right? And so even now, like working in the medicine community, like, uh, you know, I, I have people tell me I have to do this 10 year path <laughs> to like, get somewhere. But what I've realized is people do that 10 year path just to get a piece of what I've already done. You know, you guys, I have been working on myself since I was 16, hard to heal. And now I'm 44. Okay. Um, I've completely, completely healed my family lineage and the trauma. Okay. I'm at a place of integrating an opening and I can't tell you how beautiful the relationships that have been coming to me, you know, high end soulmate connections and just such a beautiful, different energy that's been happening in my life. It doesn't even matter if my twin comes back. I, I don't even care about that anymore. I'm just like, what? That vibration so old now. Um, and the thing is, is that whatever we are doing, um, in regards to moving into our truest calling is the ability to continuously surrender, release, 
let go and allow God to come into us to flow because the more that we can heal that ego piece to to bring it down to us you know to be able to step back to allow God that is when our truest expression can come through and so I wanted to bring this all through today because you know what I what I'm able to see so okay so we'll go through my gifts I have had uh conscious astral projection uh spirit I have left my body I remember the first time uh, several times this has actually happened but the first really prominent time was uh, during my marriage I had left out of my body and I was floating around and I had uh, my conscious mind and my subconscious mind had completely united um I was walking around that was pretty cool but I've had like actual with my gatekeeper who is my higher self uh working consciously leaving my body and going into other realms I'm able to remote view I'm able to telepathically connect I am able to read most energy if not all energies and I'm and I'm just being honest um pretty much I can feel the energy highways I'm able to see the astral plane I'm able to see the energy highways I'm able to see where people's channels get clogged and I'm able to know who's trying to manipulate your your channel and the only reason I was able to get through the manipulation of the channel was through medicine that I was able to see shamans one particular shaman who you know I will never work with and ever give her my energy again because she's a backstabber um, you know, sat with me one time and she was like, how do you get way up there? I want to get up there. Wanted to siphon me with darker forces one night when I stayed the night with her, uh, bringing in her guides to siphon my energy. Like there are people in this medicine community who purposely work for power and control completely. And I will never, never. And the reason my channel is so clear is because I know the dark forces. So let's go in. Spirit is telling me to tell you about my mystical experiences. So met Jesus, met white buffalo woman, saw the fairies and the leprechauns, um, right through until about when I was 16, I got my first tarot deck. My mother hated it, right? My mother tried to hide it from me. My my family on my on um, both of my sides are very scared of the mysticism. And so when I got my tarot deck, my mother didn't like that I was reading tarot every day. She took the tarot from me and hid them. Now, I can tell you that when you open your energy up, you are open to all things. There is, I don't care what intention you set. Okay, yes, everything is intention. And you can, but the state of love that you can hold unconditionally for yourself is the state of frequency that you open your channel to. If you have not healed your lineage... Okay, that intention of deep love that you know, if you haven't healed, some of that unhealed energy will open up to those frequencies in the energy realm. Okay, now this is not a good or a bad thing, you guys. This is just, you know, how energy works. Okay, depending on what you have inside of your body, right? If you haven't healed, if there's still trauma, if there's still darker things there. That is the only frequency that you can open up into the ethers. And so the more refined you get in your healing, the more that you go into your subconscious, the more you're clear your channel is going to be purified where you're going to get a clear channel to the truth, to the creator, to God source. Okay. And that takes deep subconscious work. This is why I work with ayahuasca. Okay. Because, um, Every time I drink, you know, there's not really a healing that needs to happen for me. It's more messages I get and direction. I get lots of blueprint premonitions and things like that. And so this is another reason why a lot of shamans have issues with me because I see much more clear than they do. And they don't want, and because they have so many years of experience, they have issues because of where they're at and where I am. They don't get why I'm able to see it and they're not. But this is why, okay? Um, because I've worked with these dark energies. So when I got my first tarot deck, my mother hid them on me. And I didn't realize that there was a darker energy. It was a trickster energy. You know, it came, it was like feeling really good with these tarot cards. I was like, oh, this is amazing. My mom hit the cards. 
I was able to talk to the being or whatever was um, connected, the energy connected to my cards, and it showed me where she hid them in the laundry room, okay? And I was able to go and find the box and open it up, and, and my mom was like, how did you find that? And I was like, I told you, I'm psychic, right? Now, this darker thing, because I let it in, and this is why I don't work with spirit guides, okay? Um, because you don't know where their frequency is. Like, this is what I don't understand. Like, I understand that some people need to work with angels and spirit guides. But why? Like, why aren't you going right to God? Why? I know that you, you can work with the angels and the guides. But you still have to have a discernment. Right? You still have to have an understanding based on how much you've actually healed and who you're actually talking to. Okay. Um, and this thing tried to possess me. Okay. This thing was trying to, I was having a spiritual warfare, very young, 17 years old, uh, within myself that, uh, very deep. I couldn't even you guys to the point, this thing started to seep into me and start to take over my internal energy body to the point that I couldn't look at myself in the mirror. Okay. This happens to a lot of people in the new age community, but they think it's their guide and it's not you guys. Okay. Um, I basically fell to the ground and prayed to God and said, God, Jesus. And it was Jesus that I prayed to, um, because Jesus came to me at a very young age whose light was so eminent. Um, it really, um, it really helped bring peace very young at a very young age. And so I prayed and said, you know, you need to help me. I can't please God. Whoever's hearing me, I fell and cried and said, please, I'm, it's, I'm fighting for my soul here. Whatever this is with the, with the tarot, you know, um, it's coming for me. Like I need your help. I was at a party that weekend and a girl came up to me that she got a message that she wanted to bring me on a spiritual retreat. It was a Christian retreat. I got involved in the whole Christian groups as well too. Okay. And, um, I went and I felt Jesus and I felt amazing. I took my tarot cards. I threw them in the garbage. I then became a youth leader with this Christian group. Okay. But my visions did not stop you guys. Okay. I thought, okay, maybe this will be it. Maybe I don't ever have to see spirit again. Maybe I was just, you know, the devil was taking over me or maybe this was just dark energy. And so from that point, I started to get involved with the Christian group and I go to Christian groups and all of this. And, um, the dark thing did leave. And I threw that tarot deck in the garbage. I'm going to tell you the story about that. Cause the deck came back 22 years later. Okay, guys. Um, yeah, the same deck came back to me. I'll tell you, the dark will find you. It does not matter how much you try to run. That darkness will find you time and time, lifetime after lifetime, because it's endorsed in the lineage, okay? And so, yeah, so I became part of this Christian group, and I'm going, and, you know, I'm seeing Mother Mary. I'm seeing Jesus. I'm seeing... <laughs> high ascended beings. And I said to the youth group leader what I was seeing. And she immediately said that I was still talking to the devil and, and basically casted me out of the group. And I'm like, okay, here we go again. I'm like, I'm done. I closed myself off for many years. I said, uh, you know, the dark energy came after me, tried to possess me. And this is how I know when someone has a clear channel or not, because that energy, I can feel when psychics open up, I can tell who they're talking to because I've had that energy try to overtake me. And I will also tell you guys, since I was little, I've had demons sit on me. I've had dark things trying to possess me. Um, when I was going through that spiritual warfare, when I was 16, 17 years old, there were things poking me at night, you know, really this is where people are like Rena you should be locked up in a psyche ward in a psychological mental hospital it's like yeah well do you know all those people are shamans who have these mental things that we think they're psychotic they're not they're not psychotic they are being attacked okay they're medicine people they're shamans they're highly awakened sorceress and high priestesses okay our world completely denounces anything to do with mysticism, deep truth and authenticity, speaking up against shame 
and guilt and what colonialism and what our world has been built out of. And nobody wants to really talk about what the pineal gland is all about. Okay? That's your third eye. I have a very decalcified pineal gland. When I do medicine, I don't need nearly as much medicine as most people because I'm super sensitive. So, um, and what I see, because the veil is already lifted from my eyes. When I drink, you guys, I see the spiritual realm on top of this physical realm. I'm able to see the energies merged. Okay. I don't know anybody else that sees that, but I see it. Um, just from my experience, again, I always have this naiveness about me that I think people see what I see. And I'm starting to realize like, no, people don't see what I see. Um, except for my twin. I believe he's had very similar visions in regards to seeing the energy run through the trees and whatnot. Um, he's been open to that. Um, but other than that, I don't know anybody that sees the matrix the way that I actually am able to see it merged right on top. I'm able to see how energies move in and out of people, how the how the energies move in the circle in the ceremony. I'm able to see how ayahuasca, she comes to it through the green light, how she moves between different people. I have a high key sense of the energy. And so uh, because of this, um, I've been casted out again. I closed myself off because I went to this Christian group and I'm like, okay, so now their thing, I'm still associated with the devil and darkness. And now, you know, my family doesn't think I'm crazy. Everyone thinks I'm crazy. I'm being poked at night, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I'm done. Closed myself off. I said, I will never do anything spiritual for the rest of my life. Got married, built a life, did everything I was, the world told me to do. And this is the part of my world of my life where I spent 10 years healing, going through counseling, working through relationship stuff. I was married, building a life, not talking about my spiritual livelihood to anybody. I shut it right down. I said, I will never do this again. I will just live happily with what the earth gives me and what society says we're meant to do. After the birth of my first child, who is so psychic, <laughs> let me tell you, and having a complete natural birth, um, I birthed my babies completely naturally, um, no medication. And because of that, her energy opened me back up. I was terrified to open back up, you guys. I'm not going to lie. My husband at the time was always very supportive of me doing this. Um, did not mind me bringing in the money from readings. And I worked with the OPP on murder cases and stuff like this. So... Um, I was very well known up north for clearing homes and, um, readings and all of, you know, all of this, <coughs> excuse me. So after I had my daughter, I was like, oh, here we go again. Spirit called me hard and I started to open up gradually, but I said to God, I said, I'm only working with Jesus because I cannot, I'm not. I'm too scared to go back into that dark place. I wanted to do it properly. And because of that, God led me on a very, you know, brought me um, a mentor uh, who I still talk to to this day. I love her. You know who you are way up north um, and who helped me with my abilities and brought me <clears throat> different people reading. I mean, <laughs> I have to say, it's really funny. God threw me right back into the dark stuff, okay? It was like, why are you doing this? Like, took me to homes to clear that had poltergeist activity. Like, that was my first house to clear, you know? I was like, what? Why are you throwing me here? God wanted me to face the demons and the darkness right from the start. And so I was thrown right back into it. Had to learn how to my power. Thank God for my mentor who was able to help me through it. Um... And start to really learn my power in the darkness, okay? And so, <laughs> even though I was trying to open up slowly, God threw me right back in. I was like, great, here we go. I uh, started my own groups. I started to see energies, darker energies, people being influenced again. And then I went through a divorce. And then I was leaving my husband. And so I closed that off again. And I was focused again on career and my children. It wasn't until I couldn't do my career anymore um, that I decided, uh, you know, I'd done all of my healing as much as I could. Um, I knew stepping into my true path that 
I was stagnant. Okay. I was stagnant in the materialism of this world. I was making good cash with like my government job. I had my own house. I was like, had my car as I had uh, whatever my kids, I was good, but I was miserable again. You know, um, I kept trying to follow what society in the world tells us, but I was depressed and it wasn't my follow. It wasn't my calling. I'm like, I need to figure this out. I, I was doing readings on the side as well. So I wasn't merging. You know, I've always had this following. People followed me from when I was well known up north. And so um, I've always had this kind of split personality. that You could say that I don't let people in into how psychically I can see. And then I would do readings and then I would just cast it to the side and just pretend like oh, I'm like everybody else and so I had this really strange split in my personality um that I would pretend to be one way and then I would you know do my spiritual stuff on the side and it came to a point where it's like I can't do this Rena you can't do this I had to merge it and God kept pulling me to you know build my spiritual business go to Southeast Asia travel take up my pension invest in in myself, create my site, do this. And I was actually ended up in another narcissistic relationship at that time. Who was up this woman is absolutely psychotic. But um <laughs> let me tell you, I had to deal with that dark stuff again to know it to a T of what um how people siphon in relationships. And if it wasn't for this person I wouldn't have known, it, especially with the twin flame journey, because this person mimicked twin flame energy, um, but was not my twin, not at all. And so this is why I know I can see the energies of people who are actually twins in the new age community. And I can tell you there aren't a lot. Okay. I, pff, I, even people that I thought were, they're not because they're not healing vibration. They have that dense darkness to them that, um, yeah, it just, it's psychological. It's not the mystical world of God and how God works. Um, and so I feel like we're hitting and where I'm being placed is the next evolutionary scale of new leaders and how to move and merge into real unconditional love. And again, it's not going to be what we think enlightenment is, right? It's not like I don't know. We have this idea of like what Buddha looks like. It just really bothers me because it's like we're enlightenment is like a place of you expressing yourself so authentically. You don't give a crap. You put it out there. You love yourself and boom, it's there. And so it's not with any like new age dogma attached to it too. Um, yeah. And so after I came out of, um, you know, working and knowing that I had to, excuse me, build my calling. Um, I left that relationship. I came back <clears throat> to the city. I wasn't able to get into my house. Spirit basically, this was the, the point of my real calling. God wiped everything down from me. Okay. Basically took everything away from me, took my children from me, took my home. I couldn't get back into my house because the renters were horrible uh, destroyed my home. I had to like try and sell it and I couldn't. So, you know, my parents have several properties. I was able to stay in their, in their condo, which is where I still currently reside because I don't know where I want to build my house. I don't want if I want to build here in Canada or if I want to build in Mexico or what I'm doing, but that's up to God. <clears throat> and so being able to stay in one of their properties, uh, whatever else I was able to sell my house, whatever, and really build up my business. Now, spirit ripped every single thing from me, every single thing. Cause you guys, it's not that I didn't work. God put me through the ringer. You know, I have hit that place of upper middle class by myself without help from child support. I'm putting that out there. I have zero help from my ex-husband and from that side of the family. And I don't care if they hear this because they know it's true. <laughs> so, um, like, I'm sorry, $400 a month for two children is not, <laughs> and never calling your kids is not support. I don't care. I'm just at the point where I just don't care. So if you have issues with it, whatever, that's just, those are the facts. There's nothing that you can't say about that. Um, so 
all of this stuff, you know, it's like I built up my life by myself. I did everything by myself. I had no partner to help me. I always had partners that took from me. I always had narcissistic people who, because that's my family lineage, right? That would put me down, put me down, put me down, put me down to the point where it's like, I'm so done. Like I, it's just like, you have to be completely done with being shunned, you know? And then is when your growth comes. God just wipes everything out for you. God seriously wiped everything out that I had to build from scratch again. Um, I went from making decent money in the government to, you know, this financial, whatever, but the spirit is saying, that's the matrix stuff. That's society stuff. When you follow God, God will bring it, uh, break everything down so that you can build an honest, firm foundation in the calling of God right? I know shamans where, you know, their house was struck by lightning because it wasn't authentic. You know, it has to be rebuilt from a humble place with God. So God can be that expression in the physical. And so I understand that now, but at the point of when I, you know, left, um, and had, and had to came back from Southeast Asia on my travels, I was like, Oh my God, seriously. You know, I have to like, completely humble myself to this, you know, and granted I did and, um, had to work through even more issues and how I saw money and how I saw monetary. Cause you know, I did grow up with everything that I ever wanted. You know, my parents worked very hard. They're, they're first, uh, they're immigrants to Canada and I'm first generation Canadian. And so I know how hard they worked. And so I have my work ethic from that. Um, And I understand the whole matrix aspect of building up finances to that point, um, which is a type of mental um, understanding of our world um, will never, never, never match when you're actually in alignment with God. Okay. Those things will fall apart and we have to trust how those things fall apart. Once you go through your total upheaval, God can then build. Now, most people that I know are still in that other path, still trying to figure out how to let go of their old life and move through, right? It will happen when you're completely ready. Um, because you, it's a purifying process. This is not an easy path. You guys, I keep telling people this, this like spiritual stuff is not an easy path. And so everything that I had been through, you know, even with people that I thought were friends in the medicine community, people get jealous of my gifts. They get, you know, I had a friend that I would talk to on a regular basis and then started calling me a narcissist and freaked out on me. Um, because you know, he saw my growth. This person saw my growth. This person can sing and has musical gifts, but never did anything with them, but had issues. The more that I implemented what I took from my medicine and what I took in my life and actually created stuff showed their own insecurities. Remember when you shine bright, it will cast shadows. People will not be able to be in your bright light. If they haven't found their own sun, if they haven't found their own bright light and they will deflect onto you that you are crazy and that you are narcissistic and that you have issues. And I can tell you guys, this has been a major struggle in my life because I constantly would take and look at myself. I never deflected that it was the other person until I really searched inside of myself. Always. That has always been a key factor for me. I always take what other people say and I search within myself and I'm like, is that true for me? Am I treating this person? Am I being narcissistic to this person? Am I being this to this person? And I always bring it back to that before I ever deflect on somebody else. And if I do not find that inner truth and I'm able to see where I'm there it's a deflection of me being suppressed again I will no longer be suppressed I will call that shit out tenfold over and over and over again to become that strong in your truth you guys it is to keep digging inside without having a victim mentality I know what the victim mentality is like It is the poor me. It is the lack mentality. It is like saying, oh, I'm never going to do this or I don't know why, you know, it's whenever we feel sorry for ourselves, we have to get ourselves out of that, especially as high sensitive beings to the point where it's like when something happens to me, I now look at it and I'm like, no, that's not me. That's 
that person's doing that. If it is me, I will look at the common denominator, you know, because um, I have said that throughout my life too. Where is the common denominator? It's me. It's pointing back at me. It's me, me, me. I take inventory, take inventory. But I also know, because <clears throat> I can feel the gossip. I already know. Like, I already know my, my twin's karmic part. All these people are talking about. I already know, you guys. I don't have to pull cards. I can feel when people are about to message me. I can feel people when they come into my vibration. My vibration is so out there that I can tell who's already scheming, who's already talking, who's already, like, I already know. I know when people pull away from me and they don't talk to me from, I know who they're talking to and I can hear my name being called. So the, these are things that you, God will give you that insight whenever you don't hold an emotional response to it. Because what I say to those people is like, keep doing that. Keep trying to prove me as fake. Keep trying to do all of these things because you have no idea the repression that I have been through this entire life. I have never had people, I have maybe, my family is really coming into a place of supporting me now. Um, I have one cousin that I talk to on a regular basis who completely supports me. And my parents are, are have, uh, <laughs> have honored that I am strange and this needs to come out. Um, and I've healed that with them. And... I have like a best friend from childhood that I talk to every now and then who doesn't quite understand me, but she's very supportive of me and it's my family and loves and I love her. And that's it. Okay. Oh, and I have like a, a new friend. He knows who he is. He was absolutely amazing. And um, we connect in a very deep place. And other than that, um, I'm very stingy with with who's coming in and you should be too because if it is something that is triggering something on the inside of us we have to look within first without deflecting to the other and then express yourself in your truth and so I have had <clears throat> people that come to me that uh you know people that I even work with like in medicine or things like that that you know who try to deflect their own control in a very sneaky way, you know, are you sure you can do that? Do you think you should sing that? Maybe you shouldn't do that. No, this is not how we work in ceremony or this is how we do that. It's like, no, I've come to a place that if that person does not support me the way that I can support them, I am not going into contract with them completely. That's where it's come down to. Um, my path has changed so much that, um, I'm just allowing spirit. I don't know what my path looks like. And this is where you become the expression of God, right? It is moving through all of the lineage stuff. It is moving through all of the healing aspects. You know, I have gone through body image issues, eating disorders. I've gone through uh, mental health stuff. I have gone through suicide attempts. I have gone through addictions. I have gone through uh, multiple really, I have gone through everything. You want to name it? been there, done it. There is nothing that I have not walked. I haven't done war in this life, thank God. <laughs> I haven't done war and I haven't done, let me see, what else have I have not done in dark energies? You know, political stuff. I stay away from all that conspiracy shit too. Like I don't, I won't deal with politics and I won't deal with government and I won't deal, I worked with it. I see how they work on the inside and I'll just tell you, government's not for our highest good, by the way. But, um, I try to reiterate that to my family. It's like, you think this government cares about your health? No, they don't. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I don't follow very much in our system. I won't go to a doctor. Uh, no, um, only if something's severely wrong. Um, I will definitely go to plants first. Um, I'm definitely one of the ways of what God gives us. God gives us our plants. God brings uh, the earth to us. Spirit is, uh, everything is in the plants and in the medicine. I don't follow human teachings. I don't go to healers. I don't go to other psychics and mediums. Um, every now and then I will get a reading. There are a couple that I do trust. Um, but a lot of people can't read me. I've had psychic people that say that they're all this whatever. And they, they can't even read me. It's like, you can't read me for a reason. It's too high of a vibration. Um, I don't follow any of these uh, other teachings out there about law of attraction, all of that. Um, 
because I am a trailblazer for the next vibration that's coming. I truly believe that. That is the walk of uh, what, what Christ walked, is what I believe, what Buddha walked, and it's being able to be that pure expression no matter what. Again, I don't like how we assume what an enlightened being looks like. I am one of the ones, I'm a very strong divine feminine. I'm probably one of the purest. I know that like, it's so funny because it's like, I never thought that I would actually claim this, but I feel like I, I, I am going to claim it and people can will see it as righteous. Those that don't want to hear it will see it as righteous and that's fine. But there is a righteousness in God. And I would want anybody else to claim their righteousness, that I am a clear channel or I am a clear healer or I have touch therapy. When I touch people heal, it's like, yes, claim it. I want to know you. I want to know those who actually claim their divinity. There is nothing wrong with claiming your divinity and your gifts. There is no shame. And people that want to say that you do not have a grasp of reality or you are being narcissistic, or you are saying that you're special. Screw that. We are all special. Claim your uniqueness and do it. That's exactly what needs to happen. And those that cannot honor you for your own unique uniqueness and your own gifts and who want to shun you and talk and gossip about you, they are not your people. They are not your people. You do not go and give them your energy. And I guarantee like this is another thing. I don't even know if I'm even where my path is even going in the medicine community. I can tell you that I will not work with those people who try to keep my psychic gifts down and how I see and how I'm supposed to work in the medicine. I already know ayahuasca has been training me in how to work with her. It may not be happening right now, but I guarantee she is yeah, leading me as, as a head shaman. And I know that. Um, and I'm just going to claim that now too, because of the, thank you spirit of how I'm able to put my consciousness aside and allow the medicine to fully come in the embodiment of my body. Not that other shamans can't do that, but there's a gift. Um, thank you. Spirit is saying, yeah, that will come into fruition down, down, down the line. I'm not sure where that, where that's going to come as of for right now. Um, in regards to the twin flame journey, a lot of karma has come around with, with me and my twin. Um, I've completely come into a place of complete surrender. I feel my twin every day, but it's at a place of, um, that was a wonderful catalytic moment. I love you. I have, I believe healed that energy. It's integrated within me. Um, but it is not something that I hold off for hope. I've completely shut that door that that would ever manifest in this lifetime. Um, I've left that to God. Um, again, I have known of my twin since I was little. I've known of the telepathy, but I also know the karmic that's the energy that's around it. I know the possessive clingy psychotic energy that's around him. Um, I also know of, uh, family issues that's all around that, <laughs> so gross I can't even like I want to throw up um that want to control him and his own truth and his own mysticism of what he sees but again this is like because we're twins there's that mystical realm of being able to see and understand energies at a deeper rate that other people are not going to understand because this is a new vibration that he and I are meant to bring down and the power that comes from that is um not something everybody can fully handle, okay? And so that's up to God. Again, that is completely up to God. Spirit has definitely brought in like high level soulmates for me. And um, yeah, uh, I can tell you guys that the more that you do your healing, where you don't need to be attached to your twin anymore, remember they have free will, right? And there is a high level soulmate that you can still invest in and share and have depth with, uh, our life and our world. There's so much that we don't have to become attached to 
um, love, right? Love is so ad advanced and, and so unconditional. And what I'm seeing now is like what our twin flame journey does and all those karmic energies that play out is for us to be able to hold a vast place of unconditional love. Like I said to you guys, whoever listens to this, whoever you know who you are and who have treated me like crap, whatever, you want to come and be my friend, that's fine. But I, again, I will not take people back into my life unless they can fully open their heart and be authentic with me. Um, a lot of people close up with me because they know that I can see through them. Um, and also like drinking ayahuasca and doing that again, I will not do it until there's a, a again, until there is a deep honoring of my gifts and who I am and who I and how I am as, as an individual instead of judging me for that. I will never do that again. And, um, that's just where I'm stating. I wanted to put this out, this, put this out into the world that those that are meant to come and work with me will manifest and come work with me. I already feel like I'm starting to collaborate and bring that forward. But I wanted to share my highly empathic gifts. So you guys, this is like how I've seen things since I was little. You know, I've seen the demons since I was little. I've seen them attached to people walking around. I've seen um, high ascendant beings since I was little. This is this is just the way that I have lived, you know. Um, when I go and go shopping and talk to people, I'm able to see who's like standing with them. Now, I've been able to control it now that I it doesn't bombard me. And I have a very strong stance in the spirit world. Whereas, you know, when I was first opening up and working with my psychic gifts, you know, people would bombard me, wake me up at night. And, you know, you see things like different mediums that, you know, they get bombarded by spirit. This is why I won't work with mediumship because you call in a vast amount of people from a certain vibration of realm to come who are still astrally uh, connected to the earth. I don't work with lower vibrations like that. Um, not my work. Um, I can see that and I can help people cross over, but again, you have to keep your consciousness at a place of that depth of that low frequency of where the attachment is. What I work with is how to bring people into massive amounts of healing and clearing of where their blocks are, especially when I do work with ayahuasca and then able to show them their true alignment because I have such a high clear channel. And spirit wants me to bring this back into the medicine community because again, like I said, I will refuse to work with people who, uh, I know don't have a channel. I I've seen shamans who are working with certain guides who think they're light and it's like, no, and they purposely won't talk to me. They purposely won't talk to me, um, or work with me. And I know with my twin and his karmic partner and though all those people, I can already feel they're trying to stiffen and take a hold of those of, of his gifts. But again, with the twin flame journey, again, you guys, this isn't your stuff to heal with your twin. If you heal it within yourself, you're able to move on and surrender. It is entirely up to your twin to do that work. And to go within their own traumas and to go and to stand up strong in their own deep knowing of the mysticism. Okay. Because twins are here for the mysticism. We are not here to be playing into new age bull. I'm, I'm being honest. It's not <laughs> any teaching in the new age community out there right now. If you are listening to this, you are here to create a new reality. The new age community is, is an incestuous pool of people just feed. And, and, and I'm not saying this like it's needed where you are at a certain growth, right? But I'm sure a lot of you listening to this, you're tired of it. It's like, oh, it's the same thing. Oh, here's another like, this is okay. Like manifest this. Let's change our thought process. Let's do this. It's like we are so stuck in like these aha moments that we stay in a continuous loop of getting more information from outside and then having, oh, I'm enlightened. This is great. Let's go back in. And we have to learn through that, obviously. And we all go through that. We have to go through the new age community to be pulled into so many different realms until it refocus you, refocuses you back into yourself. This is again, back into your darkness, that timeline, that piece that you need to walk back to to find that innocence again within yourself. And that work 
is what I help people with. That is not easy because that means you have to face yourself. You have to look at where you haven't been nice. You know, I've apologized to my ex-husband. I've apologized to people who I have wronged in my life. I've also mostly had to stand up for myself um, and tell people where to go, really. And this is why I have that fire passion, uh, very much the Kali spirit, because it's uh, that's the other side of pure divine feminine energy. Divine feminines do not take crap, you guys. Okay, divine feminine sees through it nurtures loves but if there is not a humbling to the divine temple the divine feminine temple it then becomes a kali energy okay to cut the ego cut the head off of the ego if it is not pure and that's where i reside that's the type of teacher i am and that's really where i'm getting pulled into there is a, a, a divine feminines are amount of wealth and love and honesty with a fire passion to call it out, right? But also to know your strength so much that you do not have the distorted aspect of possession, of clingy, of uh, this, I can't live without you. Like, I, I can't deal with that. That is just an attachment in divine feminine energy that I see run rampant through the new age community. Um, Especially this whole looks thing, you guys. What is with this physical beauty thing? Like, this has bothered me. It's not like I'm not a good looking. Like, I know I'm a good looking person. Like, this is not. But that's ego, right? It's like um, beauty and sexual. Like, I can tell you guys, okay. I Since I've been stepping my divine feminine, I can't tell you some of the hot men that I'm getting. I can't even tell you, okay, that these model looking women that that have that follow the superficiality of what good looks are based on what our system has provided would look at me like ew why is he with her like that i would be the girl that people would be like why is he with her it's like yeah because you don't own feminine energy you're just based on like your looks okay and these type of women have massive issues with me massive issues with me because I hold divine feminine stance, real feminine stance. I don't care, guys. You want to see my flabby arms and my stomach? I got it. But you know what? I'm also like the Buddha. You know, Buddha had a belly. We're prosperous. <laughs> okay, we're prosperous. It's joyful. It's, you know, the trauma that has done rampant um, stretching and things like that on my body, the, the trauma that I've had in my life has left my earth vessel, yeah, a little bit worn. But that's okay, you know? There's a sensuality and a power that comes with pure divine feminine energy that is not about how your body looks. Not at all. I don't care if you weigh, you know, so much weight or whatever, or you're stick thin or whatever. Divine feminine energy is not in the way your body looks. It has nothing. Attraction has nothing to do with how the body looks. If you're stuck on aesthetics, you're stuck in the new age community. Now, divine feminine energy will naturally take care of herself and work out and do those things based on the energy that she is holding and the body will naturally fit where it needs to fit. And your person, if it's a soulmate or your twin, will be attracted to the energy, not the aesthetics. And if your masculine or your feminine energy is stuck in the aesthetics, they are not worth your time. And I can tell you, you guys, I will never take my twin back because he's stuck on aesthetics. I can guarantee that every woman that he's ever with has to, they all look the same. Like they all look like they stepped out of a beauty magazine. It's like, have fun with that. <laughs> have fun with that because that energy will never match his what he ever he's looking for and same with you guys if you're looking for a soulmate or a twin flame go by the energy if you're stuck on how this person is going to look you are stuck in something aesthetic that is a conditioning that has been put on our culture okay because guarantee the energy when you connect with somebody energetically not based on how they look right because I can tell you, if you're based on someone that you're looking like, oh my God, look at how they say that. Look how sweet they are. 
nothing to do with that. Nothing to do with that. A soul connection is the feeling of the energy of the communication of the knowingness that is deep inside of you. That is where attraction comes from. Okay. From the inside out and people that are stuck on the aesthetics don't go that deep. They never can go that deep because the world services those good looking people. They are entitled beings. They are privileged beings because the world gives them what they desire because they're able to get the job based on like, if I wear a short skirt <laughs> or if I act this way or, if, you know, I, I used to be able to get jobs, you guys, you know, um, because I could talk the talk. Not that I even knew what I was talking about. Like I even moved up in my career, which I can say, cause I just researched the lingo, talked out of my ass and I could move up. People know, like, you can fake so much in this world to move up in this world. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. But if you want truth in your life and you want a deep knowing, you have to go within and discover that about yourself. You have to know yourself. You have to walk through those darkness. You have to look at where you've been repressed by other people. You have to look at your gifts. Everybody has these gifts. Everybody has the sensitivity. But you cannot compare yourself to what we have been conditioned, right? That's entirely different. So, yeah, I feel that's that's about it. I think I've gotten to where I wanted to talk about. Um, I really put it out there because I just don't give a crap. Like, I mean, you guys can probably hear it in my voice. I just don't care anymore. Like, I don't care. <laughs> like, I don't care. I'm just going to put out the teachings and just do it and um yeah and just say it like it is and then um again people again i'm hearing the spirit is like people are like well that's your, just your perspective that's your perspective that's your perspective and spirit is saying yeah everything is the perspective uh if you look at it like a wheel right in the middle is god and there's so many spokes that come out from the wheel which is all different perspectives. But when you gain enough perspective, you get to the center of the wheel. And when you get to the center of the wheel, that truth goes out through multiple perspectives that then come back to you. And I can tell you, I get clients from all different kinds of uh, places. Okay. Uh, I get men, women, I get people who are more predominantly in a, in a religion, not so much, but I have. And, um, I get all kinds of different people from all over the world because when you hit the place of being connected solely with God, you hit a multitude of perceptions. Um, yeah, yeah, completely. And that's another thing too, for highly sensitive being spirit wants me to bring this up. Do not let people take advantage of you. You know, they're bringing up like, you know, someone that stole my meditation and takes my work from me. Like I, I've had this betrayal thing in my family lineage for very long. And I finally believe I've hit, I've healed that huge karmic cycle of betrayal in my life that I'm just not even dealing with it anymore. Um, and I've seen the progress over time in regards to this betrayal of my family lineage. And this has been a very difficult thing that I've been, I've been working on. And, um, <clears throat> I feel that I've actually like healed that aspect. A lot of highly sensitive beings deal with this betrayal aspect um, in regards to, huh, yeah. Yeah. Spirit is saying it has to deal with the, the narcissism and then um, other, there's so many different aspects that play into it. But uh, yeah, if you, yeah, so if you look at the betrayal aspect and all the different aspects of narcissism that plays into that, um, you'll see where you have been betraying yourself. Where I've been betraying myself this entire time is not stepping into my full power and just saying it like it is. And this is why I wanted to come forward and share you guys with my path. You know, that I have been, um, even though I was born with all of these gifts, and even though I was born completely awakened, I did not have an awakening process. I was already awake. Um, since I was very little, um, I still had to go through a refinement process, okay? So depending on where you're at and where you've had your awakening, there's still a refinement process that you have to fall back into that feeling place and to go back into yourself to 
realize where you have been stifling and betraying yourself so that those energies do not come back to you. Um, yeah, and then a new vibration can start and a new one can start to open up and that you're honoring yourself in all of the talents that come through. And all of us have some type of creative aspect within us. I tell all my clients this is, you know, you have to be creative in your life in some way to create, to bring in the force of creation. And the more that you do that, the more that you're able to do that and get out of the psyche and into the feeling, right? Because where I'm seeing ascension happening on the planet is a lot of the new age community talks about the psyche, the thoughts, the thoughts create your reality. That's somewhat true, but not really. We are actually feeling beings, you know, a baby is not thinking thoughts. Okay. A baby when they first come is intuitively feeling their mother. That's all of us humans have this natural ability to feel the empathic abilities, the psychic abilities, the intuition piece is our first method of communication when we're in the womb. So why is that being stifled on the planet? Why? Why is our new age community only about what you think is what you create? That's not true. And so I call all of them, all those high end teachers your teachings don't work for people like me. Okay. And, and I know if you're listening to this, it don't work for you either. You guys, I know that because our first way of being is intuition. A baby does not survive by thoughts. A baby survives by the empathic energy that they feel the nurturing that they feel that intuition that feel that feeds them deep inside and a lot of us have forgotten that this is where i take you back and so when you become highly sensitive you become highly feeling yes you will get attacked by the unconscious and by those who cannot get to that point who struggle with it and who come from places of attached love attached conditioned love that they don't you know you're supposed to treat me this way. You're supposed to, I have a boundary. This is my love language. Like all of those things is a based on a psychological aspect that we continuously try to fit ourselves into these psychological boxes when that's not our natural way of operation. None of it is. This is why I could never work in the new age community. And this is why I'm bringing this down is to heal that, right? The psyche part, we have to work through the mind process, which is what meditation does. But meditation is just the first step right? All of these things that people meditate for hours on end. Yeah, that's great. But that's only the first step to calm your mind. When do you come into your feeling and heal your emotional world? Or are you just stuffing the emotions down? Are you really ready to face those emotions? And when you're ready to face those emotions, how do you purge and allow it and to honor your sensitivity and where those emotions actually guide you? Because the emotions are the compass that take you into the mystical realm that then trigger the imagination, the pineal gland. Your imagination is how spirit talks to you in your third eye. The visions that you get are how spirit talks to you. So all of these things is what I'm here to teach you guys about to move through the emotional realm. Once you heal the psychological realm, which is what I know plants do, it's part of the trauma and the stories that most people are stuck in. We move into healing the emotional realm. Then you're able to fully honor your gifts in a deep intention. And you're merged with God, right? Into the mysticism. And this is where I, I take you guys into trusting that intuitive piece of how to hold different vibrations within yourself. It's all a feeling place. It's not the mind stuff. We're, we're moving away from that. We're moving away from that. All right. That's long enough. That's, um, whew, what I wanted to talk about. Um, yeah, I guess I didn't go into much detail about my gifts, but that's basically what's happened to me my whole life. And this is why, like, I wanted to come forward and to talk. And this is why I also have a hard time of even like, um, like, I don't understand how tarot readers out there can do consistent reading. Like you guys, I am not, I'm too sensitive, right? I flow with how the day goes. I flow with where God leads me. Um, that's just how I operate. That's my divine feminine energy. Um, and so, yeah, this is why I've taken a break from YouTube. This is why, you know, it's because I had to come out and speak this truth. So 
yeah, so I'm putting it out there. That's been my life. <laughs> um, we'll see how this progresses. We'll see how this goes out there. I would love to hear if you have, you know, comments about it, mental disorders, anything like that, anything that you got out of this, I would love to hear. Keep the comments clean because I will just ban you from my page or, you know, I'll just turn off the comments altogether. But that's been my story, you guys. Um, that's how I know I'm a clear channel. I've walked through the dark. I've been attacked by demons. I've had things try to possess me. I've had like all of this stuff. Um, yeah, God really put me through the ringer um, for a reason though, right? So yeah, thank you so much for listening. Um, yeah, I hope that was, that was the raw version of Rena. I'm sending you guys so much love and thank you for being here. Take care. Have a wonderful day. Bye.